I've noticed that a lot of people are really confused about how gravity works in space. It's as if they're under the impression that as soon as an astronaut enters space, gravity just suddenly turns off and that astronaut becomes weightless. As if leaving the planet's atmosphere just suddenly makes gravity go away. I see this logic used a lot in pop culture communities especially when discussing scenes in either movies or TV shows that include space. I lost count of the number of times that I heard people complain about the opening action scene of Star Wars The Last Jedi during a World War II style sequence when a fleet of bombers intercepts a giant star destroyer and takes it out by dropping their payload onto the hull of the ship. Usually they'll say something like, you can't drop things in space, there's no gravity. Now I'm not trying to say that The Last Jedi is a good film. It is not. I'm just saying that the logic in that scene is correct. You absolutely can drop things in space and they will fall downward. The physics in that scene make total sense. And I'm going to explain how that works by the end of the video. Like I said, most people believed that dropping a payload doesn't make sense in a space scene because there's supposed to be no gravity in space. But that's simply not true. There is gravity in space. In fact, there's as much gravity just above the surface of the planet as there is on the surface of the planet. Honestly, there are a lot of online communities and creators in general that seem to misunderstand how gravity works in space. And it leads to a lot of really bizarre information getting spread around. The vast majority of people that debunk NASA or debunk space footage, for example, use a lot of really ugly arguments when showcasing astronauts footage, with the vast majority of their arguments basically boiling down to, I don't believe what I'm seeing because this footage looks fake, when in reality they simply have no experience with how physics behaves in space. Stop telling me that things look fake in space. Okay? Things behave very differently in space. Now, I don't think that it's necessarily their fault for misunderstanding these things, though. Part of the reason people are so confused about space physics is because of the way that space and gravity are communicated to us in popular media. I don't think anybody really explains it that well, though. Even science communicators tend to gloss over it too quickly. It's as if people who showcase astronaut footage get so excited about the novelty of the effect of weightlessness that happens during space travel that they don't don't really take the time to explain how it's happening. Most people just associate space with weightlessness and then just leave it at that. You see someone in space, you see them floating. Seems simple. And I think people are so used to seeing astronauts in the media operating in zero gravity or in microgravity environments that it's created this perception among the general public that there is no gravity in space and humans will suddenly start floating off the floor the moment their spacecraft exits the atmosphere. But astronauts are not weightless simply because they are in space. That's not how it works. When we're here on Earth and we're falling, there are a lot of environmental indicators that communicate to our brain that we're falling. Generally, we can perceive other objects around us and beneath us. For example, when we see our environment around us suddenly moving upwards quickly, our brain will perceive that as falling. Also, the ground beneath us, when it moves up towards us quickly, we get the sensation that we're falling. Or worse, if the ground underneath us suddenly disappears, then we'll know we're falling. And not to mention the air, the atmosphere we're in. When we fall quickly, we travel through the air quickly. When a skydiver falls, they can feel the air rushing up against their bodies. So even if they have no visual environmental cues that they're falling, the air they're traveling through tells their brain that they're moving very quickly. When these things happen, we physically feel the sensation of falling. But when you're falling in space, there are less environmental indicators to tell you that you're falling. One of the biggest differences between falling in space and falling inside of an air atmosphere is that inside of air, there's only so fast a falling object can travel. Friction from air pressing up against a moving object stops that object from being able to exceed a certain speed. Eventually, the speed of the object falling and the speed of the air pressing up against that object as it falls reach an equilibrium. When an object starts to fall, it'll start to speed up, but as it hits this equilibrium, equilibrium with the air, it will stop accelerating and reach a top speed. This is called 
terminal velocity when an object can't fall any faster because the air is pushing up against it too hard. But the terminal velocity of each individual object depends entirely on the weight, the density, and the shape of that object. Different objects experience different freefall speeds. A rock has a really fast terminal velocity compared to a feather, for example. I think everyone's thrown at least one rock in their lifetime, and you'll know that that rock will travel pretty much as fast as you threw it. But you can throw a feather as hard as you can, and as soon as it hits the air, it will basically stop immediately and start floating to the ground. A feather's terminal velocity is very slow. But have you ever seen that basic experiment where they drop a bowling ball and a feather inside of a vacuum at the same time? I'm sure you have. Okay, so the question is, if you were to drop a feather and a bowling ball from the same height in a normal environment, which one would hit the ground first? Obviously, the bowling ball will hit the ground first, right? The bowling ball is so heavy and dense that it has a much faster terminal velocity. Whereas the feather is so light and fluffy, not only will it fall slower, but it probably won't even take a straight path to the ground. But in a vacuum, the rules are completely different. There's no such thing as terminal velocity in a perfect vacuum. In a vacuum, when you drop the ball and the feather together, they'll both hit the ground at almost exactly the same time. It doesn't matter how dense each object is. That's totally irrelevant. The feather will match the speed of the bowling ball the entire way down because there's no air to create friction against the feather. This might even look fake to somebody who doesn't understand what they're looking at. Some people believe that images like this are fake because this isn't what we're used to seeing in a normal atmosphere. It defies our experience. But what about gravity itself? How is it that astronauts are experiencing weightlessness in space? Are they actually weightless? Well, imagine we're in a UFO hovering above the Earth. If we were to place a completely stationary object in space above the atmosphere, I think that a huge chunk of the population believes that that object will be weightless up there and will automatically begin to float around. But that's not true. That object will immediately begin to fall towards the Earth in a straight line. Gravity will grab that object and pull it down. In fact, that object will probably fall so quickly that it will go faster than terminal velocity. As that object begins to fall through the vacuum of space and begins to accelerate, it's possible that that object will exceed the maximum speed that an object can fall inside of an atmosphere. And it's also possible that that object can go so fast as it's entering the atmosphere that it will begin to burn the air around it during re-entry. This is why so many space shuttles and space capsules have heat paneling on the bottom. And this is also why meteorites look like shooting stars as they're traveling across the sky, because they're burning the atmosphere around them. As an object is falling through the atmosphere, it will continue to burn until that object either slows down to terminal velocity, or that object is destroyed. NASA has a training jet that they've nicknamed the Vomit Comet. They use this jet to simulate weightlessness for potential astronauts who have never been to space before. The way that it works is that the jet climbs to a high altitude and then begins to point its nose downwards to travel towards the Earth at about a freefall speed. And because the passengers on board the jet are falling at almost exactly the same speed as the jet is flying down, it creates the illusion that the passengers are floating weightlessly. This weightlessness obviously is just an illusion. The truth is that they are falling, and they're falling very quickly. But so is the jet. And because the jet and the passengers are traveling down towards the Earth at about the same speed, the passengers on board the jet can't really stick to the floor. So like I said, the passengers are not actually weightless. The jet is just traveling towards the Earth as fast as they're falling. And because there's nothing in the passenger's environment to indicate to them that they're falling, their brain believes that they're weightless. So why is it that astronauts feel the sensation of weightlessness when they're in space? Why aren't they feeling 
in gravity if there's gravity in space? Well, usually when astronauts travel into space, they enter orbit. Orbit is a very specific thing when an object is traveling so quickly that it maintains a trajectory in the shape of a ring around the planet. And it will continue to travel in that ring over and over and over again. The way orbit operates is actually kind of simple, considering how difficult it is to actually enter orbit. Basically, an object in orbit is traveling so quickly sideways that it's counteracting the object's desire to fall down towards the Earth. It's not that gravity goes away, it's that the sideways speed counteracts gravity's pull. Really, whether it's an astronaut, a shuttle, a satellite, or the moon, everything that's orbiting the Earth is actually falling. But they're falling so fast sideways that they can't fall down. And the only reason that these objects are even able to go this fast in the first place is because they're outside of the atmosphere. They're in a near vacuum environment. It's exactly like the bowling ball and the feather experiment. There's no terminal velocity in space. The magic of orbit is all about finding the right speed. So as an object in orbit falls sideways, it does start to begin to fall down just a tiny little bit. But as the object changes direction towards the Earth, it's basically already passed by the Earth a little bit. And because the Earth is a ball, each time it turns towards the Earth a little bit, it basically just continues to fly past the Earth again and again in a ring shape. So the astronauts on the International Space Station are not actually weightless. They very much are being affected by gravity while they're up there. Weightlessness is just an illusion of the falling effect. What's happening to the astronauts on the International Space Station is exactly the same thing that's happening to the passengers on the Vomit Comet. Because they're in an object that's moving beyond freefall speed, and the passengers inside of the International Space Station are also falling at the same speed, the astronauts appear to float because the astronauts are basically free falling sideways along with the craft. So astronauts are not actually floating when they're in space. They very much are being affected by gravity. Astronauts are falling while they're in space. The comfort and ease at which astronauts float is actually misleading. The reason they don't feel like they're falling is just because there's nothing in their environment to communicate to their brain that they're falling. From their perspective inside of the International Space Station, they believe that they're not moving at all, when in reality, they're in a constant constant state of free fall. The effect people feel during the Blue Origin rocket launches is a little bit different though. The Blue Origin capsule never actually enters orbit. They basically just go straight up and then come straight down. But the passengers do temporarily experience weightlessness while they're in space for a brief time. And I think to the layman who doesn't understand what they're watching, they're just assuming that the passengers of the Blue Origin rocket are experiencing weightlessness simply because they're in space and there's no gravity in space. They are experiencing gravity, they just can't perceive it. Their weightlessness is an illusion of free fall. As the rocket is launching, the passengers on the Blue Origin rocket feel their weight getting pressed up against their seat. They'll feel very heavy. But as the capsule is released from the booster rocket and begins to slowly fall back to the Earth, that's when they're experiencing weightlessness. The speed at which the capsule falls back to Earth is matching the speed at which the passengers are falling back to Earth. They're not weightless because they're in space. They're weightless because they're falling back to the Earth at the same speed as the capsule. Again, it's exactly like the Vomit Comet. There's nothing in their immediate environment to communicate to their brain that they're falling. The Blue Origin passengers are very much being affected by gravity during this time. Gravity is pulling them towards the Earth very quickly. It only appears peaceful because of how well controlled the trajectory of the capsule is during this fall and how stable the attitude of the capsule remains. As long as the capsule looks straight and stays flat, it creates the illusion that everyone on board is just floating peacefully. But there's basically nowhere you can go in space where you're not affected by gravity. Even if you go deep 
into the void of the darkness so far out that you can barely see a star, you're still going to get pulled towards something. You're still going to fall. Whatever the closest large object is, is going to start drawing you in. But you'll be falling for so long through the relative vacuum of space, it will just feel like you're floating. It will feel like you're weightless. You won't even notice that you're falling until you get close enough to an object like a star or a planet, and then that's when you'll feel it. So how does this all relate to Star Wars The Last Jedi? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> to recap, during the opening action scene, a large Star Destroyer appears over the Rebel planet right above the Rebel base. It aims its super weapon, and in just one volley, it takes out the entire thing. A fleet of Rebel bombers and a squadron of Rebel fighters intercept the Star Destroyer, attempting to take out its super weapon before it gets a chance to fire off a shot at the Rebel fleet, which is kind of just helplessly meandering away from the planet. Only a single bomber makes it through the Star Destroyer's defenses and approaches the target point, and a brave bombardier drops their payload and takes out the Star Destroyer at the last second. Like I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of people complained about this scene, saying that it doesn't make sense because there's no gravity in space. But as I explained before, Yes, there is. I think the reason that most people are confused by this scene is because they're assuming that the Star Destroyer is in orbit around the Rebel planet. But never in the history of Star Wars have we ever seen a ship of any kind orbit a planet. That doesn't happen in Star Wars. In fact, the Star Wars universe has done a lot over the years to establish that ships do not need to orbit a planet in order to hover above it. Lots of objects in the Star Wars universe defy gravity. Speeders and speeder bikes hover above the ground without even having to run their engines. This isn't orbit. Ships take off and land without having to even use their thrusters or their forward engines. This defies flight physics. And the the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi is able to hover above the moon of Endor without having to enter orbit at all. As the Rebels showed us in their graphic during the conference scene, the second Death Star actually has to remain perfectly still over the moon. The Death Star remains in a geosynchronous position above a shield generator on the surface of the moon. You see? If the second Death Star was in orbit, the shield generator wouldn't be able to protect it. The Death Star was hovering hovering above the moon. Even in Rogue One, we see a Star Destroyer just hovering above the city of Jeddah. Does this look like orbit to you? No, this is not orbit. So in The Last Jedi, when this massive Star Destroyer is firing its super weapon against the rebel base on the surface, it's not orbiting the planet, it's just hovering directly above the base. And the super weapon on the ship is on the belly, meaning that it had to point the belly towards the planet and the top of the ship out towards space. So if you were to fly something over the top of that ship and then drop something, the thing you drop absolutely would travel down towards the planet in a straight line, period. But tell me what you guys think. <laughs> Thank you so much to my patrons and my channel members for supporting my videos. I could not do this without you. I love you guys. You're amazing.